morning, folks. Today we want to talk about Celtic Knot. Now, we get a lot of requests here at World Headquarters, but our response is always the same. We're just going to keep on playing anyway. Now, uh, today we have uh, chosen at random, from among the uh, many hundreds of requests we got, uh, we get, we've chosen one question about the Celtic knot. The Celtic knot looks like this. When it's finished, this person requests to know how those, uh, how the pieces are cut and glued together. So, uh, fellas, <clears throat> what is the name of, of our uh, lucky person this morning? Oh yeah, yeah, okay, got it. Uh, that person is Sally Kenny, Phoenix, Arizona. Sally writes, I would be interested in seeing how the initial cuts are made for the Celtic knot and how the additional pieces of wood are glued into place. Thank you, Sally. That's a good question. And we're gonna try and do that today. As I mentioned earlier, this is the uh, initial block. It has four sides, obviously. I have cleverly numbered the sides, one through four, and uh, with a little arrow at the top on one end. So to make a Celtic knot, you need a piece that's relatively square, about six to eight inches in length, or depending on the project, what you need. <clears throat> and uh, you need to uh, make an angle cut across each of the four sides and glue a contrasting piece of material in there and then <clears throat> wait for the glue to dry, trim off the excess and eventually you'll have a cut to all four sides and when you turn that on the lathe this pattern will appear. So uh, I, I've uh, taking the liberty of making the first three cuts, Sally. And so today we're gonna to make the fourth cut and uh, hopefully be able to show the glue joint and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and, and how that works out. So, uh, fellas, uh, we need to get the camera over here to the, to the uh, miter saw. And uh, again, folks, we're working with the skeleton crew. Uh, you know, good help is really hard to get these days and especially in a holiday weeks it seems like uh, everybody wants wants time off so uh, we're gonna do the best we can here to get this set up so that uh, you will be able to see the the saw and uh, so you can see here uh, side number four is the side I'm going to cut you notice that it's the only side that doesn't have an X on it. Once I get this one done, all four sides will show an X. So, to do that, we put it in. We always cut from the same end. We're going to cut from the end that has the arrow on it, like the other three sides. And we put this in there. As you can see, we can see the result of the other three cuts that I made. Now, I'm going to dress this edge up a little bit with sandpaper, set it right here. The other thing that's necessary to do, besides making the four cuts and making them at an angle, is that the width of the cut needs to be pretty close to what the curve of the blade is. So I'm, I'm adding just a little bit to the cut here. So that the material that we took out is going to approximately equal the uh, material that we're going to put back in. So here's our pieces. So uh, yeah, you guessed it, fellas. We need to move that darn... If you can 
do that as quickly as possible so we can get on with the uh, with the uh, demonstration here today. So here we are back uh, where we can, this is the glue station. I have clamped a stop piece to the bench and I have my pieces cut here. And this is the piece that I'm gonna insert into the, in between the two. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna apply a coat of glue each of the uh, faces here, including the including the accent piece. Spread that around so that it is even. And then we're gonna clamp that piece to the stop block because we don't want it to move anymore. Apply a coat of glue to that. As you can see, this isn't particularly high tech. Uh, you know, the rule is be sure you get enough glue on, but don't get too much on. So um, that's what we're going to try and do here. Now we also need to, to get a coat of glue on the on the accent piece, and this is so that. Imperfections in the surface of the wood uh, will be at least partially filled by glue and will make for a, for a smoother finish, a, a smoother joint rather. So this is why a project like this takes about, about four days. that you don't want to do, but it happens. This takes about four days to, to uh, complete because uh, you have to wait for the glue to dry. I usually leave the glue to dry uh, for about uh, a day. This is water soluble glue so you excess off your hands and then we're going to position this in here and we, we like the, uh, the accent piece to protrude slightly on all the sides so we're going to clamp this piece here and then we need another clamp across across here catching that when we walk by, we want to position the clamp in this way. And then we're going to draw the two pieces together with the accent piece in the middle. idea here is that we have to uh, equalize the pressure on this clamp and this clamp because at the beveled edges the piece wants to slip. So I'm looking to see if the piece is, is uh, coming together <clears throat> and uh, so that's, uh, that's what we do. I don't think there's anything else you can see. See that the piece is glued there. That will stay that way till until tomorrow, at which time I'll take the clamps off, remove the excess of the accent piece, and then eventually put that in the lathe and turn it around and 
we're anticipating that it should look something like this. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Sally. Nice suggestion.